Okay guys, today we're gonna to talk about one thing that a lot of people easily overlook when it comes to their RV tires. And it's probably not what you're thinking. So stick around, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Hey guys, welcome back to Why Wait. I'm Chris and today we're gonna to talk real quick about uh, RV tires. Basically talk about one thing that a lot of people overlook when it comes to uh, safety and maintenance and things like that. Now we're not going to dive into too much of these too deep because I already have a whole video on RV tire safety and everything you could really ever possibly want to know about RV tires in that video. I'll put a link down, you know, video description to that below if you want to go learn more about some of the things we talk about today. But today I just want to touch base on one thing that a lot of people forget to check and they, it's easily overlooked. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, RV tire pressure, or he's going to talk about maybe the date or code on the tires or something like that, and that's not it. Those are important things. Most of us do have a tire pressure monitor nowadays. If you don't, I recommend day one, go ahead and get that right now. Because as you can see, we have the uh, TST tire pressure monitor system. We have the flow through valves right here. We have those on our truck and on the RV. That's going to go ahead and read out the temperatures of the tire and the tire pressure, which you need to know both of those, you know, before you hit the road. That's one of the biggest things uh, when it comes to RV tire safety. But what I really want to talk to you about today is torquing the RV tires. A lot of people forget on their travel checklist or the day that they're pulling out, they go through, they do the walk around, they visually inspect the tires. We're checking, you know, proper inflation. We got our tire pressure monitor system. We're all set to go, but people don't really always think about checking to make sure everything is torqued down properly. And one of the biggest times you want to do this, believe it or not, is actually when you just had some work done to the RV. If you just recently went in and had some maintenance done, you had some tires rotated, even straight from the dealership, believe it or not, you want to check to make sure all the lug nuts are torqued properly to spec. We've seen so many stories of people actually driving these things brand new off the RV lot and a tire goes flying off because the lug nuts were not torqued down properly, torqued down at all. And this is something that happens more than you would think. It's also something that happens uh, if you go again to a shop to get some bearings repacked if you're not doing them yourself. This is why I really don't ever, you know, trust anybody else doing the work if I really don't know them. And if the work does get done by somebody else, I'm going to go back and check it myself. And not only that, but if you did recently have, say, your bearings repacked somewhere and you do hit the road, you're going to want to go ahead and retorque the tires anyways after about 50 to 100 miles. And that's for any kind of work. Anytime this comes off and gets torqued back down, after about 50 to 100 miles, you want to go back and recheck the torque settings yourself, even if you did it yourself. That's just standard procedure. We recently just had some work done to the RV. We had, uh, as you can see, maybe a new suspension system put on, axles. We got the uh, hydraulic disc brakes put on, all kind of stuff done. And it's been about 100 miles of towing since we had that done. I'm back home now, and I'm going to go ahead and check these lugs myself and make sure that they are torqued to specs still and that everything looks good with them. This isn't something you have to do every time you hit the road, every day. Okay, we're getting back on the road, let's go check the, you know, the lug nut torques. That's not something you have to do, but I would recommend, you know, every few trips or so getting under here and checking to make sure that the lug nuts are torqued properly. So one thing that you're gonna need is a heavy duty torque wrench, uh, a breaker bar if you're doing any kind of work to your uh, tires, you're not gonna need the breaker bar to uh, exactly torque them but anytime that you're going to take this tire off don't ever use your actual torque wrench to break the lug nuts that's not recommended but I would recommend carrying a proper uh, breaker bar such as this anytime you go to break these lug nuts and loosen them up you don't want to use your nice torque wrench that you spent a lot of money on it's not really made for breaking the lug nuts or any other kind of bolt that you may have to loosen you always want to try to use a breaker bar for that and then you're going to need a heavy duty torque wrench. I like this one right here and I've used it <clears throat> for about four years now. And I'll have links to all this stuff, Amazon links to all this stuff down below. This one actually goes up to 250 uh, foot pounds of torque. And you might be thinking, man, when do I ever need to torque something down to 250, uh, you know, foot per pounds. And I'll tell you right now, when we installed our Reese Goose Box up there, actually, I think I had to torque those bolts down to 220 
And uh, I'm a pretty fit guy, and I'll tell you what, that kicked my butt, that was really hard. So, but you do need a good torque wrench. I have two of them. I have another one, a smaller one that goes up to 150, which would be adequate to torque these down to their max. But it's not quite as long, so I can't get as quite a good of leverage on it. So I still prefer to always use this one anytime I'm doing my tires. It's just easier to uh, get them torqued down to 120. Now, talking about how do you do this? What's actually the proper way to torque it? Well, if you usually go into your Lippert manual that came with your RV, there's gonna be a uh, little chart that you can look up your size wheels and your lug nut pattern, and you're gonna know exactly how to torque them down. You don't wanna just go ahead and just, you know, crank this one down to 120, then crank this one down to 120 and just go around and do it like that. There's usually a three stages that you wanna do it. You wanna go ahead and like set them all down to like 50. And then after you crank them all down to 50, go back through and crank them all down to like 70. And then do the third stage where you do the finishing uh, tightening where you tighten them down to, for me, 90 to 120. And you don't wanna just randomly do that either. There's actually like a lot of times you hear a star pattern that you want to kind of torque these down to. Always, first of all, screw them on by hand first. Anytime if they're completely off, you want to start them by hand to make sure they're properly threaded first. And then you want to go through and say, do the top one, then jump to the bottom, then jump back up to the top across and do the one across from it, back to the bottom, back across. This way you're seating the uh, wheel and tire on there properly. Now you can have problems either way, if these are too loose or if they're too tight. Obviously, if they're too loose, one of the biggest problems you can have is, well, your wheel is going to go flying off when you're going about 60 down the highway and nobody wants that. I actually just saw that happen on another uh, YouTube channel I know. The uh, tire went, now I'm not saying it's because your lug nuts were too loose. In fact, they might have been too tight and might have broken studs. I don't know. While you don't want these too loose, you also don't want these too tight. If you over tighten these lug nuts, you can actually uh, strip the fastener threads or you can actually stretch the wheel studs. Both of those are bad. It can lead to cracking. It can lead to warping of the rotors, the brake rotors, uh, if you over tighten these. So there's lots of ways to really damage this whole system under here by either not tightening and torquing these enough or over torquing them as well. So like I said, we recently just had some work done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check these and just make sure everything is torqued down to spec. This is another little handy item we've had for four years traveling right here. Just uh, flip sockets, you know, you have 19 millimeters on one side, 17 millimeters on the other side. You can easily uh, just kind of flip them, use whichever one you want. Uh, various sizes, these come in handy for all sorts of things underneath there and other areas of the RV and truck. So a handy little case, if you guys wanna check that out, link down below. Um, we're just gonna pull this out right here. We got the 19 millimeter right here. And we're just gonna pop them down, torque them down, make sure everything looks good. Okay, we went ahead and set this for 120 foot-pounds of torque. And uh, that's my finishing stage. I, I don't need to go through the three-stage system. That's basically only when you take the wheels off. I know that these are well over, you know, 50 or 70. I just need to go ahead and make sure that they're kind of tight to spec after having some work done and having them taken off. And another quick tip is with your torque wrenches, always make sure that you store them with this setting all the way back down to zero. Uh, you don't wanna leave it set anywhere else. I guess just over time that can damage your torque wrench. So always make sure you get this back down to zero when you put it away for storage. And let's just go ahead and pop this on here. Now I am in a tight space here. I'm underneath my slide out. This is a lot easier when the slide outs are in, but I think we can still get the job done here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go through this and do all these and make sure they're properly torqued. Guys, it's something you always want to check on. Don't ever trust anybody else to do the work. And if you had work done, even if you did the work yourself, come back 50 or 100 miles after you've been on the road and go back and check on, make sure everything's torqued to spec, and then do it every few trips or so because uh, it can be a dangerous situation and you can cause a lot of problems if these are under torqued, over torqued, or not torqued at all. As always, guys, thanks for checking it out. Get out there, start your full-time RV adventure because why wait? We'll see you next time. Yeah, bud.